for play for my barstool sports it is a massive week for the fellows we're all over the country right now we've got the ltp classic we've got the pga championship at kiwa island jake bass trent ryan frankie borelli who i'm sure we're gonna get into the islanders yeah, they are live Ooh. from kiwa they're on the island trent has like a tree behind him i'm hearing a lot of stuff about tree houses i just came for whirlwind golf club uh where we will be hosting uh out of the clouds a uh, a two-day college women's golf tournament to finish their season at the end of this week so there's a lot going on there's a lot to be excited about also a lot to be excited about in the owens mixer world because now when you may have thought you didn't have any options you may have thought your season was over you may have thought you're drinking kind of uh, extending extending your options extending kind of what your expertise is was over now it's not because owens exists they've got all kinds of awesome flavors we were drinking their mar margarita mix last week they've got the uh the grapefruit and lime that gives you the lurchy paloma which lurch has kind of created a paloma brand all of a sudden it's picking up steam i mean people love the paloma it's a little different um i mean i was a transfusion guy through and through and then i actually switched to a greyhound that's just vodka with the grapefruit so it's really the same mixer just different different alcohol in there um but people are just loving the Paloma, which I love. I mean, it's near and dear to my heart. You throw a little grapefruit, a little seltzer, a little lime, a little tequila, a lot of bing. Mm. It's a nice drink. Well, look, I think it was a nice mm there. I think it speaks to the fact that people are looking for new drinks, man. You're looking for new cocktails. You're looking for something refreshing, something you haven't had, something that's new to the palate. And Owens offers that opportunity times a billion because you can just mix with all kinds of different uh, liquors. You can mix different. So uh, big thanks to Owens. Go check them out. They're on Amazon. You can get that shit delivered right to you. That's what most people are doing. They're in a ton of retail stores now, Publix, Kroger's, all kinds of good stuff. So big thanks to Owens Mixers. We're, we're having a meetup. Yeah, wow. we're having a meetup. Trent's just in the other room. We're screaming at each other now. We're trying to get the first word in. That Whoops. actually was weird because it was very echoey, Trent. I see what you're saying. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, where is the place we're going to? Uh, Uptown Social. Uptown Social. If oh, you're I've in the there. Charleston area, apparently it's the best place in Charleston. So it's a good spot. We're going to be going there. Um, I think. Now, this is me just spitballing out my ass, but I think like there's a transfusion night at the um, – is it the is it the Mud Dogs? Is it the Charleston River Dogs? River Dogs. Is River it the Dogs. River Dogs game? There's a there's a transfusion night, and I think Josh from Josh from uh, Owens is like throwing out the first pitch. Now he offered for me to come and Trent to come throw out the first pitch. I politely had to decline because it's Islanders. It's Islanders game there. Like it is the like it's Islanders game three, um, and I said, you know what, man? Like I really appreciate that. I will be enjoying my transfusions at the meet and greet. We are gonna just stay all day. I am going to get uh, what they like to call litty titty because I'm going straight from the from PGA Championship watching with all of our friends. If you're in the Charleston area, you better come down. We are staying there. If you're not going to the River Dogs game, we're staying there and we're watching Islanders hockey in Charleston, South Carolina. I don't know if there's a big fan base, but I know I will create one. Wow, I will yeah. say. <laughs> I, when I thought I was going to Kiowa, I declined that invite as well, but I, it was because I thought it was a careful calculation that it's a lose-lose for somebody like me yeah. to go throw the first pitch. Like, I'm a hockey guy. <laughs> I can't throw. So if it were at like a fucking MLB game and the, and the exposure is worth the potential risk, right? But we're talking a fucking ice river dog <laughs> game where like the only thing that can happen is I fucking duck hook one into the ground and I get laughed at forever. I'm not doing that. Now, like throwing out a first pitch was like a childhood dream of mine. I'm a huge baseball guy. Played Same. my whole life. I can barely lift my arm because of all the balls I've thrown. All those shout out to all the oh water God. shout out to all the waterlogged baseballs that the East Meadow uh literally used to make us toss around that we all just have completely torn labrums and arms and elbows. But uh I would love to, but I can't I can't, as Frankie Borelli, New York Islanders fan, in my right mind, be standing there tossing baseballs around at a minor league stadium while the New York Islanders play playoff hockey at the Coliseum. No. So thank you, Josh. Thank you, Owens Mixers. I hope you throw a strike. But when you're done with that, come back to what's the place called? Uptown Social. Uptown Social. Uptown Social and we will be litty titty off Owens Mixers. Yeah, we're going to be there at 4 o'clock. If you're in the Charleston area, definitely come out and say what's up and drink some transfusions. Do you know uh, Riggsy, Mike Martinez? Uh, oh, yeah. Marty's yeah. great dude. Yeah. I didn't know he was – he's good friends with, obviously, uh, uh, Owens Mixer. So, he'll be there hanging out. He was at wondering if I was going to be down there for the weekend. So, the first time I met Josh from Owens Mixers, and the way this whole thing started was through Mike, a.k.a. Marty, as all his friends call him, at the Super Bowl when we were there a couple weeks ago doing radio from the Super Bowl week in Miami. And, uh, and we played around with – 
Ryan McDermott, who's one of our best guys at our company, and Marty and uh, Josh from Owens Mixers. And then we were, he was mixing up and we were starting talking transfusions and Palomas. And next thing you know, we had our own drink. So, um, so yeah, you boys have fun at, at the little meetup. I'm jealous I'm not going to be there. Things have changed dramatically, obviously, in the last three or four days. Um, I, Jake Bass is now taking my credential and going to be at the PGA Championship. It is, it is a major championship week, but I don't know that we're going to start this show talking about a major championship. You can't. You can't. I don't think we, we can. major championship on the horizon. What's transpired over the last, I'd say, 72 hours, I mean, maybe it's a little bit more than that, but it's Pretty. actually preposterous what's happened. Um, things kind of just fall into uh, Barstool's lap sometimes, and what we're able to do it and run with it is what – no other company can even replicate it, right? Like we're able to just throw funds and, and the backing of all these influencers and all these people on social media behind something. And we can turn it into legitimately its own major. And what you're doing Riggs is absolutely insane. Finding a golf course. I mean, go into it for anyone that doesn't know, maybe people aren't so aren't on social media, so you can explain it better than I can. Yeah. So it's, um, it's been a whirlwind of uh, four days now. I mean, we're recording on Monday. Uh, this all really started, I guess, on Wednesday night when that video went viral of the official coming down the staircase, the, the infamous staircase now in Baton Rouge at LSU, uh, announcing that the golf course was playable but not championship level playable. And thus, the regionals for uh, the NCAA women's golf championships were canceled and they were just going to go based purely off rankings in the top six of the 18 teams that had flown all the way down to Baton Rouge were going to advance to Greyhawk, which is happening this weekend out in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, there were a few people started to immediately ask questions. Uh, he just walked up, turned around and just disappeared. And they started screaming and yelling. There were videos and photos all over of the course and how it was actually playable. Um, yeah, maybe they'd have to move up some tees or they'd have to tee off from the fairway on some holes, but that it was playable. They all wanted to play. They'd flown down there with their families. A lot of them, grandparents had come down, parents had come down because as, as we know, like we all played, uh, you know, a athletics to some competitive degree, high school, college, whatever it was. And like, that, that last game, when your season's ending, when your career is ending, like it's emotional, there's flowers, there's pictures, there's, it, it's such a huge part of your life. And you're, you, you put your blood, sweat and tears into everything. It consumes your life. It's who you travel with. You're in the van, you're in the hotel room with all these people. And it's supposed to end a certain way. And everybody knows that it's supposed to end on the field, on the golf course, on the ice, wherever that is. Um, it's not supposed to end with some fucking clown saying that the course is playable, but not championship playable in a viral video where people are screaming at him and he just disappears. So I didn't know how much, day. how much you were going to go into that announcement, but one of the all time bad announcements <laughs> in the history of human existence, just sort of meekly walking down those steps, putting his hand, which you did a great job replicating with your press yeah, conference. Really and, then, good. and then them just turning around as people are screaming <laughs> at them being like, let them play. And they're just like, all right, see you guys Dude, later. It was really bad. They were like the ministry of, magic from like from harry potter where it's <laughs> yeah. just like they come in this group they announce this horrible thing and they kind of just go back into the darkness <laughs> right i couldn't believe it i was i was like one of the all-time to trent's point worst announcements is everybody's point like there's no more wrong side of the coin or wrong side of the equation that you could be on except with that announcement and how bad it was but i think the only other thing that was worse than that that they just announced it and just left it was absolutely ridiculous and so to capitalize that on that in the barstool way it's like you you rigs you and the team like you could be on the better side of the equation like it is it was preposterous and obviously it's in such a good place now and it went viral for all the wrong reasons and it's tricky for us right because trying to put on this event we cannot throw the finger up at the NCA because they have to sign off on it. And now we're getting waivers so that, you know, the, the, the players can play as teams. Um, so we're not looking at the event as like an F you to the NCA. We're looking at the event as like, Hey, it sucks that they didn't get to play. Do we think it was the wrong decision? Yes. Do we think they handled that conference horrifically? Yes. Um, but we're not looking at the past. Like we're trying to put on an event uh, that's going to have, you know, these 12 teams playing in Phoenix. And then the next day, Saturday, the championships kick off for the other teams uh, in Scottsdale, 30 minutes away. And we're all going to be celebrating women's college golf and it's going to be great. So that's kind of the angle that we obviously have to take. 
But my point is that the, and we're going to have the Mississippi state head coach on here very soon, Charlie Ewing. He's awesome. Um, but you know, we, we were all tweeting about it, right? When that video went crazy, we were all tweeting about it ever you had to. And, um, and a few of the responses started to be like, you should, you guys should bring them to a Barstool Classic or host a Barstool Classic or invite these girls to a local, you know, whichever one's closest to where they're from so they can play. Um, it started to get a little bit of steam. The wheels started to turn a little bit and we were all together because we were in Southern California putting on a Barstool Classic Thursday morning. So, you know, myself, Lisa, Ian, the whole team that's there, Trisha, like we were all together and we started to talk a little bit about it. Well, then I get a text from Dave Portnoy at about 6 a.m. local time on Thursday morning that said, you know, you really should put on a tournament um, for the, these teams that got canceled. And I just said, like, you know, do we have like, do we have kind of the backing and, and what we need? And he said, you have the full backing of Arsenal sports, like get it done. And so right then we called Erica, myself and Lisa Litvak, who runs all of our live events, all of our Barstool classic events. She puts on rough and rowdy. She puts on the pond hockey. She puts on when spit and chicklets does a live show. Like she's fucking there. Um, she was extremely into it. And I would say, fellas, like, we're very busy guys, all of us on this show. We've been, we've had hectic, crazy days, especially at major championships where you guys are. You know, we put out like 10 sponsor videos a week that we put out. We do two podcasts a week. We're putting on 30 events across the country this year. Um, we're just putting out shit all the time. Thursday to like Friday midday was the most hectic and crazy time of my life at Barstool Sports by far. And it all happened on a putting green overlooking the Pacific Ocean at Monarch Beach while we were putting on an event with 108 golfers drinking Trulies and walking around all over the place and like asking like, Riggs, who the fuck are you talking to over there? And I was like, I'm talking to a <laughs> compliance guy at Mississippi State. So the whole thing was, was ridiculous. But Barstool Sports, uh, like working in a place like Barstool Sports, as we've all had these moments, is so unbelievably cool. And sometimes it's because it puts you in front of Tiger Woods. Sometimes it gets you to a spot where the whole New York Islanders are, are eating dinner with you at Borelli's. Like sometimes it gets you carrying out a luggage suitcase at, at you know, in, in Peru or wherever Trent was. Like sometimes it gets Lurch hitting a ball to four feet against Pat Perez. And sometimes it gets you where like we mobilized so many things in such a short period of time to put on a golf tournament that changed the next week and the whole ending of like 48 now girls college golf careers and we did it in like half a day and it was like it was crazy and the amount of people that were into it I, I called the Thunderbirds who obviously put on the waste management Phoenix Open um, my buddy Brent Talley who's awesome you know he was on a he was on a plane with 80 Thunderbirds on their way to Cabo to play a golf golf weekend and they were he was like we're on it we're gonna find a place like we're calling people um, Troon Golf, who owns a ton of golf courses, including Troon, where we played Pat Perez and a million other courses around, they were on the case and they ultimately came up with Whirlwind. I got a call from Whirlwind that was like, hey, um, we've got some tee times, but like we can move people around and we can do it and we're going to do it for free. Like we're so behind this cause that we're not going to charge anything for the golf. So then we had a golf course, the compliance shit, dude. Like I got guys in my phone contacts now that like after – after like six hours of texting nonstop, I actually had to be like, hey, what is your name, by the way? Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, the, you know, this, this guy called me from Mississippi State and he's named Steve Smith. He's awesome. Great name. He, uh, but he's like called me out of the blue kind of. We got his contact from the coach and was like, I'm going into a compliance meeting right now with like Mississippi State Compliance Office and the NCAA. I need, I got to ask you like 10 questions because I need to know what you're trying to do here. And then he goes into this meeting and fights on our behalf and then comes out with answers. And then he and I are talking, the Purdue compliance department are talking. I've got like the captains of some of these teams that me and Lisa were doing zoom calls with. So like, just, we're just been doing whatever the fuck it takes. And Lisa lit back, we all know, just like sent me an email the other day. That was just like, I think it was yesterday. It was just like, like in 15 years of putting on events and working in this industry, she's like, this is the most fulfilling thing I've ever worked on. And it's been like, it's been crazy and uh, but it's been awesome like it's not stressful because it's hectic but you're like every note that comes in that's like presents another issue comes with thank you guys so much for doing this and like 10 exclamation points so it's been nuts i'm a crier so like this week man i'm obviously yes. gonna cry 10 times during this right. whole thing <laughs> these are tears worthwhile be... these are tears <laughs> on point that people get these aren't tears leaving finers <laughs> which confuse the world these ones make sense because it is fundamentally 
I think like the best thing that we've ever done under this umbrella. Like it's without question, power to you, power to the team at Barstool Sports. Like them announcing that when everybody's playing the same golf course is just basically the golf kind of like elitist that like we don't understand and we push back again. So the fact that this happened, the announcement came, and then this whole tournament spun up behind it is so damn cool. The gear, everything is just so spot on. So these are where the tears make sense and where the public can get these tears because it truly is a feel-good story of, no, your career should end on that last field, that last effort where you're pushed out of the game. Not like someone's just like, no, no, you can't play this game that you played all your life. Like, it's just over. Like, that's not how these things go. Right. It's, no. it's, it's rare where you have a situation where one side is clearly the right thing to do. And this is right. just the right thing to do. Yeah, the NCAA, they fumbled it. Like, I know you guys are working with them now, and we don't want to say whatever. But, like, it was just the right thing to do. And I honestly think that Barstool Sports is the only company on the planet that could do something this quickly. Like, when Dave and Erica say – you have our full backing, they fucking mean it. And they will just give you everything you possibly need. And Riggs, like, you're, you're obviously great at putting tournaments together. You've been running the Classic like a motherfucker these last couple of years. And so when you combine those forces and it's the right thing to do and people want you to do it, it's just the best possible scenario. And it seems like we're going to pull it off and it's going to be incredible. Yeah, also yeah. kudos to, like, the golf community also, right? Like, I feel like golf in general is the only kind of sp- – sport that would have people rally together like this like finding tea times and golf courses like they everyone just wants people to play at some point they love the game they want to promote the game and when you find like that 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 niche of people or that group of people that Riggs has gotten in his phone book where like everyone just wants to help out and like and get it done like sometimes they're like you know you find these like rich assholes on golf courses and like you, we have all these perceptions of people in golf but like sometimes these guys that own these golf courses or the thunderbirds that put on these they're like the nicest people in the fucking world that genuinely want to like promote the game and help people help the little guy or the little girl in this in this uh in this situation and it's going to be fucking awesome for these people that they like you said a million times that they're not ending their careers in a parking lot uh from a bunch of weirdos on a on a on, a, on steps telling them you have to go home now it's over so i'm very <laughs> excited for it uh i i wish we were there i can't believe this is all happening in the same week like uh, I, we, me and trent were just sitting in the airport like how are we not going to be at that tournament but then like you have to like step back and be like it's the fucking PGA Championship also like I just don't know how this all happened it's crazy that it's all happening in the same day but that's also Barstool like fucking Dave is in fifteen different states at once so that's just the way we kind of operate. It is man and like dude Dave's been texting me every day like what's the what's the commitment list who's committed what's the deal you know Quinnipiac was originally a no and then they and then they reversed and he he saw like me posted he's texting me like oh. But it be like flipped. And I'm like, yeah. And he, you know, so he's been like, <laughs> he's been very glued into the whole thing. Erica has been calling me every day. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, to get all that stuff done, right? Like, dude, we had the merch department like mobilized and fire and also the merch we is had fire. The merch fire. is fire. So the logo, good. Like, on a, obviously, like a less important note, the logo when it first came out is just incredible. Who made that? Yeah. Who at our company made that? So, dude, we sent it to graphics, right? And so it was actually me. Me and Trisha, so Trisha basically works underneath Lisa at the Classic, and and I was like, I think just LTP, like a Dodgers or like St. Louis Cardinals style logo would be fire. And the first one that they did, they actually kind of nailed it, but it was a little too like masculine. It was like blocky, and Lisa and Trisha were like, we just need to make it like a little bit more feminine. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but you have my right. forehead. <laughs> so did so they then they sent back like another rendition and literally like within an hour or two of us requesting it it was we saw that one and i was like that's it that's perfect and then we put they put the circle around it with like the little green um and just nailed it we had a bunch of renditions and and they just nailed it but like we had to we had to get the graphics department fired also we had to get the merch team fired we had to get the business team because they had to get sponsors to raise the money to pay for all the expenses for all of the players we had to get the finance department to like figure out how much it was going to cost and can we get that money we had to get our legal team our poor guy paul who erica said has been a lawyer for us for a cup of coffee we're all of a sudden like hey buddy grabbing him by the neck and we're like answer all these fucking questions about ncaa compliance and he's like jesus christ so we got like the legal team on it um it, it's the events team is obviously all over it and then our golf branch has been you know all over we got to get social teams out here we got to get the production teams out here to cover it so uh, but everybody's just been all in it's been really really cool 
Um, and again, the, the, you know, like we were on a, me and me and Lisa were on a zoom call Saturday morning at like 7am, 8am with four girls from Oregon state who had like 20 questions about everything before they could commit. And, you know, like they're college girls, right? So they're like, they're, they're curious, they're inquisitive. They were ready. They were very prepared. And we answered them and chatted with them and they were all very confident and just, and then at the end they did a very heartfelt, like, I can't express like how much this means to us. You know, and what you've done, and I just text Lisa. I was like, I have to get off a of Zoom call. I'm gonna just start crying. Waterworks. Yeah. <laughs> it was... Riggs, we lost your picture. I don't know. Sal Riggs, are you there? Yeah, right. <laughs> <It was gone. laughs> no, my bad. Sir. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just like doing push-ups and stuff. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's gonna be like if you think if you think I cried just leaving Pinehurst. Imagine what's gonna happen at this golf course the next couple of days. So, um, it's gonna be awesome. Now we're trying to focus on putting on an event and. Um, we're going to have on here in a few moments, the coach from Mississippi state, who is awesome. And like one of the, one of the people I've leaned on because like, we've never run a college women's golf tournament before. So now all of a sudden we're putting on like their finale tournament. That's going to have all the eyeballs, more eyeballs than they've probably ever had on it. Um, and so, you know, understanding like how many people should we invite? How do you guys usually travel? How, how many rounds should we play? Should we do 36 both days? Should we do 36 one day? Do they get to have carts? Uh, what's the format? What's the team format going to be? Um, all of that stuff has been like, we just have to talk to people because because we don't know. Um, and Charlie from Mississippi State, like I said, has been awesome. And I know he's got some stories from being there on site because the things that happened at, in Baton Rouge were were crazy like nobody saw that video and just thinks like oh yeah that was just this that was it it was just the surface I, no, that was clearly just the surface of some crazy shit that had to be going on um so i'm very excited to talk to him but uh but yeah it's gonna be wild that this is all going to be happening while you guys are also down at the pga championship with a very select few media members that have credentials to this right thing. that's the one thing that i think like you know i I kind of just like had to take a step back and be like, yeah, we have to go to PGA because one of the things that's really important for us as a brand is just being on site, right? Like today, like we saw um, Steinberg and, and Seth was on the plane. And it's just like for us as barstool sports, the idiots that talk about golf on this podcast that somehow put together this incredible tournament that rigs that we just got talking about. And, like the, all the stupid things that we do, the fact that we're able to be inside the ropes at a major championship helps us just grow our brand so much that like things that may ne not necessarily be on video or talked about or blogged about helps us like get the Justin Thomas videos or the, or the, the potential interviews or the Rory McElroy's of the future. So um, we do, we're, we're going to be boot, boots on the ground, but we do have Charlie in here. I see that he just joined the zoom. So I want to make sure we don't ignore that. <laughs> no, we, we got him. We got him. Be a we, weird uh, ignore. I'll tell you. Yeah, that. Just, <laughs> just imagine we just did the whole show and just Charlie just had to listen to it. Like. Yeah, just to see if he would interject or not. Just the most bizarre thing of all time. Uh, we, that would be a good bit. Just invite someone that we kind of don't like and just never actually unmute his mic. <laughs> Old man media, just bring him in and just never unmute the him. The day we get Ian Poulter, you guys just never talk yeah. to him, and he's just like finally just like, what's going on here? <laughs> like, Folks, if there's one crew of people that I would say is extremely vulnerable when it comes to security and protecting your online accounts, finances, devices, if you could think of one crew of four people that would be the most vulnerable people to that and have 0, 0.0 protective guards up, who do you think that crew might be? Well, it's us. And I almost don't want to put that out there because it is incredibly true. You know what I mean? Like now people just know they probably knew before, but now they definitely know. And I, we need help with that in a big way. Big time. Big here's time. a, uh, here's a fun little Frankie fact for you. Every 10 seconds, someone becomes a victim of fraud or identity theft. What's worse, 23% of those people don't get their money back after the attack. If you think it could never happen to you, you could easily be their next target Aura can help. Aura provides digital security protection to keep your online finances, personal information, and tech safe from online threats. With Aura, you are alerted to fraud and threats fast, very fast. Um, so if your online accounts or passwords were leaked online or if someone tries to open a bank account in your name, you'll be alerted. It's easy to set up. All plans come with $1 million in identity theft insurance. That's $1 million. And I know I say insurance. Insurance. To help 
insurance. insurance. I also say Quinnipiac, which is going to be a problem. Recover your stolen funds and experience U.S. customer support that's got your back. Aura is a new type of security that uh, service that provides all of your online information and devices with one simple subscription with an easy online dashboard and alerts. It's all just very, very easy. Right now, Aura is offering our listeners early access and three months when you visit Aura.com slash foreplay. That's A-U-R-A dot com slash foreplay. Aura.com slash foreplay to get access before anyone else and three months for free. All right, we're joined by uh, Charlie Ewing, who's been awesome. He's been my kind of main point of contact the whole time. First time we've actually been on video together, so it's nice to put a face to the name. But what's going on, my friend? Hey, guys. How y'all doing? I appreciate y'all uh, having me on this, this afternoon. Any relation to uh, Patrick? Uh, I mean, other other than about the foot of height difference, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, my, my dad my dad's actually five five and a half. So I, I think that right there just goes ahead and shuts down everything about uh, <laughs> related. And there's not an athletic bone in anybody in the Ewing family. This Ewing family. <laughs> um, so I mean, I imagine you guys got to be pretty much packed to get ready to go, right? Uh, yeah. So we're we're basically today was our day of making plans. Uh, you know, the the NCAA waiver kind of made a big deal on what our plans were going to look like um you know as far as actually booking the plans it wasn't going to affect our participation but as far as actually you know making plans work and stuff that was a big deal so um this morning our our compliance officer steve smith literally was sprinting down the hallway to come tell me that that waiver had cleared from the ncaa and how excited we were to be able to travel out there as a team and so uh we, we got our, our plans finalized we're uh, in the the packing process and ready to go and uh, I mean, you you got to tell them what what that meant for your travel plans because it's pretty baller. Yeah, so we uh, we have a we have a pretty awesome university. Mississippi State loves to to step up and support um, the athletic program. So we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be stepping onto the private jet tomorrow morning, flying out to uh, to Arizona, playing a few Let's days, and the private jet back home. <laughs> That's so good awesome. living. That is so cool. <laughs> It's um, good vibes in the way of the tournament. Jeez, it yeah, is. There, there's no other way we'd want to do it. That's for sure. That's so awesome. And it is, it's a, it's a big, big, big school. Um, that's got a lot of powerhouse programs. And, and so, yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Um, we were just kind of going over it and I wanted to go over it, you know, with just our crew before someone that was actually there. So we could kind of give our take, um, just, just what happened, but we weren't down there. We weren't in Baton Rouge, you know, you were, um, all we saw was the video and, and then we all read a few articles and a few quotes and saw pictures and videos from some of the players and some of the coaches. But from your perspective, you know, like what, what really led up to that video and, and what happened in that video? Yeah. So, you know, unfortunately there's a lot of questions that we have that are still kind of unanswered of really, you know, what was going into the decision, uh, where that decision came from, but, you know, going into the weekend, looking at the forecast on Thursday, Friday, there was no secret that it was going to be a wet golf tournament. And and, and really, uh, being you know, being a college golfer myself, and a junior golfer, and then coaching college golf, and um, and you know, my wife playing professional golf, and, you know, being around golf so much. I mean, the the weather is something that impacts every single golf tournament. So you look at a forecast like that, and you see you see how wet it's going to be and you really don't do anything other than prepare yourself for a wet golf course. So the conversations that we have as a team are, um, you know, we might have some on and off play. They might call us off the golf course for lightning they might send us back out. You might have um, pools in the fairways. You might have you know, a little bit of pooling on the greens, but it's really just a preparation for um, not perfect. And, and so that's really what it was leading into uh, Monday. But um, on Sunday, we had perfect weather for the practice round. Um, and, you know, in hindsight, uh, I, I know there was a little bit of conversation that came up, but in hindsight, you know, Sunday was a day that we really wish we could have utilized um, as, you know, maybe get in the practice round in the morning, play that afternoon. Uh, you know, whether I, I don't know if that is allowed right now for the NCAA, but um, that's definitely something that should be allowed going forward, just that flexibility to play. But, you know, we get to Monday morning and, um, the forecast was spot on. Um, it was dead on what, what it was, um, what it was supposed to be. Uh, and it's raining that morning. Uh, and so we never left the hotel that morning and, uh, we just keep getting you know, update after update. And then finally it gets to noon and golf is called for the day. And, and, and it was really, it was really disappointing. Uh, and it was really frustrating for it to be called at noon because 
the forecast did show that the, the morning was supposed to be pretty messy as far as the weather goes, but the whole afternoon was going to be high of 85 sunshine. Uh, and you know, and, uh, we, we were, we were ready to play in that. So that, that was a little, that brought up a lot of questions in our head of, you know, how, how, in, how intentional are we about being, you know, getting this golf court, this golf tournament in, uh, and how much, you know, how, how much effort are we really putting into, you know, getting this, this golf course going. So we're, we're, we're really just uh, confused. So we spent the afternoon at top golf, kind of a, a way to, you know, um, uh, kind of be entertained, but also get a little bit of practice in at the same time. Uh, forecast comes in on, you know, for Tuesday, it's going to look just like Monday. Um, and after Monday, there really wasn't a ton of optimism um, that Tuesday was going to get in. If Monday was deemed to be unplayable, then Tuesday surely would be deemed to be unplayable because it's the same forecast, but a little bit wetter golf course. You get to Wednesday, a little bit more of the same. So there's really just not a lot of optimism. Um, the later we get into the week about what the, you know, how much golf we were going to be able to get in. Uh, and then of course, just the, what really, um, triggered the most questions, um, and the most frustration was there at the end when the golf course was deemed to be playable, uh, but we didn't play any golf. Um, so we really sit here having, you know, having a lot of questions. Um, but you know, of course there's, you know, you kind of turn those questions into, you know, what can we do now to, to prevent this from happening in the future? You know, cause you can't fix it now, but you know, it's not something that you want anybody to ever have to go through again. So that's kind of where we stand now of trying to figure out, you know, how can we better the, the, you know, the manual and the process, make sure it doesn't happen again. What has been the process of trying to get those answers, right? Because for me, you know, I, having, having, worked hard to put all this together with a lot of different people. It's like people have questions all the time and we just fucking answer. It. <laughs> it's like, it's really not, if somebody has a question, we just, we just answer it. It's really not that complicated. And if we don't have the answer, we send a quick note and say, don't know that right now, let me get on it. And then you try to come up with the answers. So, you know, now it's been half a week. It's been five days or four days since then, you know, what has that process been to try to get answers? So really, you know, what it starts with is, um, I, I think it's very fair to say that the NCAA has, um, that they've taken notice of what happened and, uh, you know, in this, this whole process, you know, that kind of goes into, uh, what's happened with this, uh, this let them play, uh, tournament coming up this week is, uh, they, they actually have been responsive, um, to, to, uh, in, um, in understanding uh, of the situation. Um, and, and, and I think that's number one is just for everybody, for every party to be willing to work with each other and be understanding of each other, uh, rather than it being a finger pointing contest or just bashing and ripping. Um, so that's something that, that we've seen a good response. Um, I think on all lens, there's been a ton of support for women's golf. So I think that's the first step, but, but here there, I know, you know, we have access to, you know, to communicate with the NCAA and, and those that oversee men's and women's golf and have, you know, get those conversations going about um, how can we uh, change the manual, change the, pr the process and change the procedures that can help this be something that doesn't happen again. And, and I think it's really important. I'm really, what I'm really hopeful for is for the coaches to be involved. The ones that are at the college tournaments every single week, you know, week in and week out at, you know, 10 or 12 golf tournaments a year to, to kind of talk about the things that, that we see throughout, you know, a bunch of different tournaments that see a bunch of really bad weather uh, and see just kind of the, the different um, ways to, to cope with those types of things are and how to, you know, make them the best out of each situation. Cause uh, we play an outdoor sport and uh, we played on, you know, on sometimes hundreds of acres. So for, for, to expect things are going to be perfect it, it's just not realistic so you just have to have the the ability the ability to be flexible to to make sure that you know when things aren't perfect you can make things right right no and look that's definitely the right the right approach um undoubtedly it is uh you know i, I know like when we first started mobilizing on thursday and you and i first started speaking and and we started talking to a lot of different folks a lot of the immediate feedback was like, there's no way that the NCAA is going to work with you on that. There's no way that they're going to sign off or that you're going to be able to get approval that quickly. Um, so it does, it does, I think, show that, um, that they have since then, like you said, they've had to respond and they have, and they've had to have meetings, you know, with Steve Smith and with the Purdue compliance departments and with our, you know, uh, legal representation 
Um, and they have, and they've gotten the waivers in place, which is all you can do since then. Um, and, you know, we were talking earlier about how the fact that like, that, yes, that was probably the most preposterous announcement I've, I've ever seen in my entire, in my life. I mean, I think like you can't help but just laugh at how, how bad it was. Like, how can you possibly handle an announcement that way? Like, did he, did you stand in front of a mirror and practice it at least? Like, how did you, like, how do you do it that badly? I would also, um, I would also argue that there was no way that the NCA couldn't work with you guys at a certain point. Right. Because the, the PR, like the bad PR was so bad that if they tried to, not allow girls to play in the let them play classic, then you're just like, you're even more the, the evil empire. Yeah. And like, and one of the things, so, you know, we were, we had started about, we, we get to the Barstool classic around six thirty AM and we started talking about it and there's people arriving and we're putting on an event in real time. And we're talking to Dave and Erica and we start reaching out to coaches. And we talk to Charlie and I, you know, and about maybe an hour and a half later around like nine or so, I just said to Lisa, I'm like, I'm just going to tweet it into existence. I said, I'm yeah. just going to, uh, I'm just going to tweet it. And I think if I just tweet it, then it just becomes real. And so she was like, I love it. And so that's pretty much what I did. I just was like, I'm just going to tweet that we're doing it. And then we, we don't have a choice to go backwards. Um, and, and amazingly, like, I think that turned out to be an incredibly strategic thing because it picked up so much momentum that, you know, we started to be able to get in touch with coaches, with players, with compliance offices. Um, and, it, and it set a lot of things in motion. But, but you know, it, it's amazing how, um, I guess to me, having now been through it for three or four days and, and seen how far we've come, it's amazing that other options just weren't figured out. Right. Because like you can just figure it out. It's not that crazy. There's golf courses everywhere. There's ways you can manipulate the course or tweak it or do whatever you have to do to just let them play. Like you just got to let them play um, because everyone's there. The families are there. Grandparents came down. Parents came down. It's going to be, you know, potentially a lot of them their, their last time competing. Um, you can't just not let them play. You just can't. Yeah. And, and that's that's what's what's really tough to swallow is is especially you look at the course of the season and you look at really any um, any collegiate sport I th- it may, it maybe college football might be the exception where they they just choose the 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 best of the best to compete in the in, in the in the playoff you know but everything else you spend the entire postseason um you're working for that bid into your ncaa postseason tournament and, and that's what we did. We spent the season and we, we earned a ranking that got us that invitation in the postseason tournament. And when you get there, the slate's wide clean. You have a three-day golf tournament. You have 54 holes. And the best six teams uh, at, at each site are going to be the ones that advance to the national championship. So you have 18 teams and six individuals that are just chomping at the bit for this opportunity that you've spent the entire season looking forward to. And then all of a sudden, snap of a finger, really for the second year in a row, um, COVID last year and, uh, and now this year with – um, you know, with, um, it was kind of what happened last week, you know, for the second year in a row, it, you're, you, you can't complete your season. And, and so you just, you just look at your, um, your seniors, but you look at your entire team because, um, whether, if you look at it through the lens of a senior, you know, y- your career's over. Uh, and fortunately it's, it, now it's not, you know, their, their career's not over. We get to go play golf in, uh, in Arizona, uh, and we get to compete one more time as a team, but, um, every team is different. So every, every year is a new team. You have seniors that leave and you have freshmen that come in. So even the freshmen, sophomores, juniors are going to look around at who's in that hell of your team and the faces are going to be different next year. So, uh, and, and I'm going to look around, it's going to be different faces that, that are in that, in that group and in that family. So you, you're going to look at every single year entirely unique and very separate of each other and remember the, the emotions and the experiences that you had with in each year and uh and now for the second year in a row you just look back at a year that ends uh in a way that the golf didn't decide how the year ended and it, it's 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 tough to swallow and you really just feel for those student athletes because you know my, my goals and aspirations as a coach are to you know go to regionals year after year after year and i hope i have dozens of invitations to regional golf tournaments but as a student athlete 
you get a maximum of four opportunities and a really good career is going to consist of multiple opportunities. And, and when you can't compete in one of them or two of them, uh, you really just, you, you just want more for the student athletes and you just, especially seeing as hard as they work, you, you just want them to have that opportunity to let it, let their golf clubs decide, you know, you know their fate at the end of the season. The Bushnell wingman is um, one of the greatest additions to my golf bag probably in the history of me playing golf in my entire career. The wingman, if you don't know what it is, it is a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a GPS distance, audible distance feature speaker. It's got premium sound quality. So you can enjoy your favorite tunes on the course. Listen whatever you want out there. And then you keep this thing. That's like a ball marker in your pocket. You press a button and it just audibly gives you the front back and middle to the green on that hole, you hit, you sync it up to the Bushnell app. So it gives you maybe the, the most underrated part of it is on your phone. It just gives you a bird's eye visual of the hole. So if you've never been to a course before, you just look at that, you hit a button and it just tells you the distance to the front back and middle. It's awesome. Yeah. It's the ultimate thing to have on the golf course. Um, you know, actually it was my girlfriend's dad's birthday and we got him one because he was like looking for watches and range finders and all these things. And, and he's a big music guy. And I was like, man, this is just like, at the end of the day, it's so perfect because you don't have to like wear anything. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff like on your body. You're legitimately, um, you're, you're entertaining the person in your cart with music. And then you're also getting the perfect yardage front, middle and back with this little clicker in your, in your pocket. And it's such a showstopper. It's such a conversation starter. Like being able to do that on the course makes you look cool. It makes you look hip, especially for an older person. It's like, Oh, look at this technology. Like it, it seems like you're doing so much. Meanwhile, you're just pressing a button. So uh, it's the ultimate gift to get. And I honestly, uh, it's changed my experience on the golf course because it's just the music quality is so freaking good that I actually use it at home too. Like I'm in the shower and right. I legitimately brought it into the bathroom and just like. Oh, that's a really good visual, Frankie. That's perfect. I know. Me, like anytime I'm taking clothes off is not good for ad reads because it just gets nasty and it gets like sick. But what I want to tell you is that the bass factor out, out of these speakers is really good when you have those uh, reverb actions in the, in the shower. Nothing like a good shower reverb. You ever give, oh, a, so you ever give a good shower whistle? Oh, man. Oh. It's the only speaker, though, that, that has like the magnet. So. Right. You just slap it on the side of the cart and like it's perfect where you got to waste a cup holder or whatever and it's bouncing around the whole time. It's got like an industry proof magnet and you just slap on the side of the golf cart. Can't be wasting cup there. holders out there. You can't be wasting no. cup holders. Those Magnets are blow my fucking mind, man. Oh boy. Whoa. Bushnellgolf.com slash four. Go get your speaker today. I had to cut Frankie off there. We'd be here for another Smart. 30 minutes. Bushnellgolf.com <laughs> slash four. Go get your speaker. Yeah, and you know, I, I know you were on the, the fire pit with Matt Janella, who's a good buddy of mine, and he and I were talking about uh, just deeper, and, and people should go listen to that when he puts it out because he does a deeper dive into the story. He's a really good storyteller. But you know, I, one thing that I didn't even really realize is, you know, I, he was talking about your guys' program and, and Houston and some of these other programs that, you know, like you guys could could make a serious run at national championships. Like it's, you know, and so to, to have this regional be decided by just who was the rankings, like it, it talk a little bit about, you know, a, the rankings are, are less meaningful than they've ever been because of COVID and, and kind of the limited amount of golf that's being played. Um, and, and it's in no way is it like the top six teams in those rankings just automatically advance. That probably never even happened. So, um, so talk a little bit like the, the, your program and, and these other programs, you know, now the 11 different schools and the individuals of reset to like, you guys are really good programs that could easily advance. And then once you get to match play and, ch and national championships and could win the whole thing. Yeah. And, and we, uh, we're coming off a, a performance at our conference championship where, where we finished runner up and, and we lost in the finals um, at the SEC match play. Um, so, so we were a team coming in with a lot of momentum. We went into the tournament as a 12 seed. Um, out of 14 teams um, and so we uh, the SEC is obviously a very strong conference um, but but we're we're basically we're exactly what you're talking about a team that's that cannot wait to get to the postseason because the slate's wiped clean we have momentum we're ready to go compete and ready uh, we're ready to go do again what you know what we know we can do we you know perform the way we know we can perform and um, and and you see it every year at uh, March Madness. I mean, that's the only reason that March Madness is uh, is what it is, is because you have the 12s beating the fives. Every single year, there's one or two 12s that beat the fives. Um, so 
you get to where that that slave swipe clean and, and ultimately uh, you know you're looking for the best teams in the country, but we all know how it goes. The hottest teams are going to be the ones that, you know, that they're holding the trophy there at the end. And, uh, and we were hopeful that we could be that team or one of those teams that found ourselves in the mix of it. And, you know, of course, you know, now we'll, uh, we'll, we'll never find out what this team was capable of accomplishing in that postseason. But yeah, you're exactly right. You, um, you know, so much can happen. And especially the way that golf is set up now with match play, match play is it's it's just unlimited fireworks i mean it is it's anything can happen uh and it, it is absolutely a blast to compete and watch mat compete in match play and watch match play and uh and i think that's been such an attraction to college golf over the last couple of years is conference championships and national championship going to match play um so so yeah i mean you're exactly right that that you get to this this point of the season and um the teams that are hot are just just you just can't wait to get out there and peg it because because you know that um you know your, your opportunity is right there and you want to go take it god uh, next year i'm gonna have to do a match play tournament <laughs> aren't i we just got to do a match play tournament god that's right but yeah that's what for anybody who doesn't know i mean when you make it to national championships there's rounds of stroke play that determine the seeds and then once you get to what is the last eight teams that are the top eight teams Yep. It's match play and anything can happen in match play. So now all of a sudden, you know, you're in Scottsdale, you're at Greyhawk, you're playing match play against any of those other seven teams and you could win the whole thing. And that's all just ripped away. So, um, so now talk about kind of the, the process of the, you know, the LTP and, and how we got to this point from your vantage point, because I've told a lot of the story about, you know, what all went down from my perspective. Um, I'm really curious from, you know, a head coach at a, at an SEC large program perspective of, you know, first hearing about it, initial thoughts on it, communicating it to your girls, getting it approved by your school um, and, and try to talk through that whole process. So uh, it, it's funny hearing you talk about just tweeting it into existence. Cause, um, cause when that, when you sent the tweet, I'm getting, um, screenshots of it from our players and from from other people that you know in, in the coaching world and and as soon as anybody oh, yeah. sees a statement like that from anybody affiliated with barstool it's like okay that's no joke that's for real and, and that was my that was my response was like wow barstool's in this something's about to happen uh be, because i i know it, it's like y'all don't mess around with that type of stuff. And you see just the impact that, that y'all have in a bunch of different ways. I was like, okay, this, there's a bunch of people that could say, Hey, you know, you could, somebody should throw a golf tournament and you're just going to scroll right past it. But this is like, okay, this, this is for real. Let's see what, let's see what can really come from this. Um, uh, because these student athletes deserve something and it looks like somebody really willing to step up and, and support it. So, uh, when that started having a, a lot of chatter starts going, my first reaction was let's, let's be a part of this because uh, there's been an incredible response to what happened last week that has created a lot of positive support for women's golf. And, and if we're just going to be honest here, um, women's golf is not something that is in um, the center of media attention um, across the sports world. And when we can get, you know, positive support like this, from an, on a nationwide platform, it, it's really, really exciting. Um, so this has been, um, of course, are we glad what happened uh, happened? No, of course not. But the the response to it has been, you know, kind of a silver lining, uh, and it's been something that I think can have a a really great impact in uh, women's golf for the long term. So so we start thinking about those types of things. Of you know, there's there's a lot of really good people that are that are stepping up to support women's golf right now, and that's something we want to be a part of. So. Um, you know, pretty quickly, um, you know, I'm sliding into Riggs DMs, you know, trying to figure out how to, how to get this thing going. And, and I'm just like, Hey, if, um, you know, I'm in college golf, you know, if I can be a resource of any kind, let me know. So, you know, we connect pretty quickly and, uh, and I'm reaching out to our compliance department pretty quickly. And I'm, I'm telling them basically, you know, my thoughts of, you know, when, uh, you're kind of just saying the same thing when Barstool gets involved, um, it's no joke. So there's really a reality. We need to be prepared for this to become a reality. Uh, and, and, and he said that, well, if it's going to become a reality, we're going to be a part of it. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure that the student athletes at Mississippi State are going to be you know, right in the middle of this thing and participating. And uh, so the, the response was incredibly supportive from um, from our athletic department. Our student athletes were, you know, uh, you know a lot of our student athletes are fans um, of a bunch of different, you know, Barstool platforms. And, uh, and it's something that they wanted to be a part of, not just, you um, 
you know, not just for the reason that, you know, Barstool wants to do something, but it's also, you know, be a part of that response, this positive support for women's golf, where we can help, we can help things move forward. Um, and if there's a way that we can help create positive change in our game, uh, then, then we want to be a part of that. So th there's all those types of emotions going on. And then, and then every, every minute that goes by, it seems like, you know, the details come in and the support comes in a little bit stronger and, and you start to realize, okay, well, it sounds like there might be a golf golf course secured and, and, and uh, these teams are tweeting about it as well. And now you've got all these teams that are starting to jump in and buy in. And it was just the domino effect. It's like once, once one or two, uh, from my perspective, it seemed like once one or two teams got in, then there was a third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And I mean, this thing just snowballed into something. And, and now the student athletes are pouring in more and more. So it's, it's just the, the last five days, the last four or five days, you know, with the involvement of this LTP classic have been absolute madness. Uh, and it's been the coolest thing uh, seeing it all come together. Cause I, I didn't think a golf tournament could come together in, uh, seven days before the first tee time, but uh, it, it's happened and it, and it happened in four days and it's been really, really special to be part of it. And, and everybody here is just absolutely thrilled to be, um, you know, a part of it and to be able to participate in this tournament and, and celebrate together one last time as a team and, and let those seniors have that last walk up 18th fairway. When you talk about how important uh, a barstool tweet like is in the world that made me just rethink a lot of the times I tweet about like growing man boobs and stuff. Like I really need to, I need to take a step back and realize that there are people out there that are like, hold on, this means something right now. Let me, let, let me see this tweet. And then they see a picture of just my like jiggle face. Um, uh, are the girls like jacked up for this, like for the actual competition? Like, are they going to go there and try and win this thing? Or is it more of like a celebratory end to their career or season? Uh, we have a very competitive team team nice. um, and sometimes it's it's uh um you know a little bit out of control so we have a team that is very very excited for the competitive aspect and that was what something that was such a an exciting thing about this ncaa waiver getting passes is saying that you know they can go out there and compete as a team and, and so everybody is is really really excited about getting out there and competing and uh and i can assure you that regardless of how anybody feels about the competitive, the competitive aspect of it right now, when, when you get out there on the golf course, you're not going to be able to help it. I mean, it's yeah. going to get very, very competitive. Uh, and, and I know our team's not even trying to shy away from that. We're going out there to compete and, you know, and, and play as well as we can, as we can in this golf tournament. Because if we have an opportunity to tee it up and represent our program, then, you know, we're going to do that to the best of our ability. Yeah, totally. I, I mean, uh, the eyeballs on this thing, like you're saying it is a silver lining. It's a blessing in disguise almost where it's like, the eyeballs on this golf tournament are preposterously different than what they would have been prior. Right. So it's like, I mean, you've got every barstool fan in America on the edge of their seat to see who's going to win the LTP classic. Like, it's just like they, the, 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 the scope of this is times a billion. Now they are, they're under the, the, the bright lights now, which is freaking awesome. I mean, I had JJ Watt DM me about this thing. I had Annika Sornstam DM me about this thing. I had uh, Michelle Wee DM me today about this thing and said, how can I help? Um, and those are just three to name hundreds. So um, I had Alex Kalorn of the Tampa Bay Lightning. They won yesterday, their first round game. And, uh, and he texted me out of the clouds an hour after the game and just said, dude, whatever's going on with this LTP is awesome. How can I help with it? So like yeah, it's crazy. People, people are supporting it like like crazy and um and we're very focused now as at the course all day today um with louie and drew and the staff up there and they are um they are treating this as, as big as they can there's you know they have like a plaque where they i think they've they've put um like a, a little walkway and they put plaques up for all their their big championships that they've had and they were like we're gonna have to add a plaque for like the ltp of whoever wins this thing so um so kind of the things have shifted to um, to, okay, we're not going to take a victory lap just because it happened. Like we're going to make it special. And we've got a lot of pretty cool things planned. Like the partners that have come on um, are, are taking all the steps that they're allowed to take and that they can possibly take to make it, uh, to make it really special. And it's, it's been, um, you know, it's been interesting to hear and see a lot of the, the, the girls, the, the young women now posting videos of them swing. Cause like, it's a grind. Like they're, they're not just like, Oh, we're going to show up and have fun. Like they're here to win a golf tournament, which is uh, which is what they've been working towards for a year or five years or however long they've been, um, you know, at school. And, and it's very funny to hear you talk about the domino effect because I, 
I sent some very rude emails to some people in, in graphics and in other places that I was like, I don't have fucking time to wait. Like we need to let people know that people are signing up for this thing because if they know they're going to sign up and they're going to say, well, if that school is going, we got to go. So it was like that, like we could, I could sense that those things were happening. And it was like, if we missed the window, then, you know, their, their best player gets on a plane and goes back to her home country and their team can't come. And so all these things were just happening so fast. And, um, and Charlie, you've been huge, man. Like I've leaned on people, you know, uh, throughout this thing that I didn't know existed until, you know, Thursday morning. Um, and, and you've been huge. Steve Smith's been huge from your compliance office and, uh, and the visual that you gave like uh, of him running, you know, literally running through the hallways, trying to get these announcements in uh, about the, the, the approvals and the waiver processes. It's, um, it's just been crazy, man. It's been, it's been hectic, but I, I described it as like hectic, but not stressful, you know, because it's been, it's been a positive thing that just keeps delivering good news since basically, obviously the bad news, but ever since then, it feels like we've kind of somehow been able to get a little win after a little win. That's going to make this a pretty cool event. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, what y'all touch on is you see the, uh, how many people are, are taking interest in this, whether it's the, you know, 10 plus million followers on Instagram of Barstool and JJ Watt and stuff. And, and what all that is, is it's, it's positive attention and positive support that's coming to, um, you know, these student athletes that work so hard and, you know, into women's golf at the collegiate level. It, it's really, uh, I, I wish y'all could, you know, really see and fully understand, you know, how much that means to us um, and how much it means to these student athletes. Cause a lot of these, these golf tournaments we play and you can go win a golf tournament and it's just the next day, it's just kind of on to the next thing. Um, but just to, for right now, there's this continual focus on how, on the betterment of women's golf. Uh, and it's, it's really, really special. And uh, I, I hope y'all really understand how grateful and, and thankful the, the collegiate golf world is right now for, for what's going on because it's having an incredible impact. You're going to make me cry, Charlie. I can't, I can't have this. <laughs> It's Monday, man. I can't be crying on Monday. We're not those even. <laughs> those tear ducts are going to be empty by thir by Wednesday oh, and Thursday. Yeah. You're not. After you're not going to have any tears left. Too early in the week, brother. It's too early in the week. For that. <laughs> just just wait until you see a senior finish their career, and the, the I mean, there's not going to be a dry eye in the house. I can assure you. Oh boy, <laughs> be awesome. Oh boy, Charlie, oh, you said man. something. Our players are going to be so fired up and go flag it. What was your line? Go. There was Peg a good it. line. Peg, Peg it. it. Stick in the peg yeah, in the we, ground. We got to get that on a shirt. L Peg it, sick. Go peg it. It's such a good line. Women's golf is sick. Five. We've talked. We've talked about that a lot. Though, like once you take uh, once you take distance out of it, they're just like extremely incredible golfers that would beat us all any oh. day of the week, right? Like, like ladies golf is fucking awesome, and the fact that they're gonna go out there and compete and like peg it and just peg hit it. absolute rocket ship drives and just darts onto the green. Like the competition is there. Like I was having that, I was having that talk this weekend with a couple of my friends where I'm like, dude, this is actually going to be like the best competition that Barstool, like Barstool classic has a bunch of fucking idiots playing it. This is like <laughs> real fucking competition of girls who know how to play golf. Right. Like actual 100%. golf is going to be played in a Barstool tournament, which for us, is just as valuable and awesome as it is for for their for like their sake, right? Like for us, like we are actually hosting a real tournament, and to us, like we should be just as proud on our part uh, that we have these girls that are this this talented and this devoted to the game that are actually playing in a barstool event. Like we should be thanking them for like actually coming to oh. us. Like that's crazy if you really think about that's it. Awesome. Like like barstool sports is actually getting these collegiate athletes to like like trust us to come and play in a tournament. Like we're actually at that level where we can accept that. That's crazy to me. I don't even think we deserve that. That's insane. <laughs> well, I, I can't, I can't wait for, uh, for y'all and, and everybody to really see them play. Cause it's, it really is special. There are some, there are some absolute talents and, and yeah. there are some really, really good players. And um, the more you follow the LPGA tour, there's gonna be a lot of players at this golf tournament that you're going to see their names, you know, down the road on, you know, on LPGA tour. It's, it, it's really cool. So I, I'm, I'm really excited for, uh, for this, for this level of golf to get showcased. Cause I think everybody's going to really find out how, uh, how specially talented everybody is. It's, it's pretty cool. Hell yeah, man. Great. It's well, congrats awesome. on the season and congrats now on, the opportunity and i'm so pumped that this all came together because obviously it's just uh it's simply incredible like it really yeah. is and i think barstool is 
it's great to see the name recognition of someone tweeted this out. No, like Riggs, we're just going to tweet this into actually happening. But to be Barstool, to be that big, to have that kind of name brand, that power, and then the belief that, no, they still operate as like a startup in terms of how fast they can move to actually get this thing going, I think it is just wildly cool. So, yeah, um, yeah I think is you can do us a favor since, you know, I have another job and travel work and uh, Frankie and Trent won't, won't be there. If you can get as much content of Riggs crying and we can put together a tape, <laughs> it's gonna be so that, would, much. that would be ideal. I'll, I'll just have my phone just buried, in, but I'll be crying right next to him. So I'll just go <laughs> selfie mode, and we're just going to be crying next to each other, wiping tears on each other's shirts. It'll just be what it is. It's hot in the right. desert, too, man. We're going to be dehydrated, crying all over the place. It's going to be it's gonna be dangerous. It's going to be real dangerous. I'm a crier, so it's going to be gonna be a serious problem this week. It's going to be a real serious problem. Well, I'm a crier, too, so we can just lean on, on each other. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Um, all right, Charlie. I, I appreciate it, man. Once. Yeah, Frankie did cry literally at Jimmy Fallon. It wasn't you know. Jimmy. It wasn't the content. It was more of the theatrics of the whole thing. The, the lights <laughs> came on. The, the I never seen a uh, I never seen a thing open up like that. You know the curtain. So whatever. LTP classic. <laughs> Let's fucking go, man. Thank whatever. you, Charlie Ewing. Absolutely no um, affiliation with uh, the other Patrick Ewing. But you were a great guest, man. You were a really good speaker. I didn't know how you were gonna do on this. Like you just throw a college golf coach on a podcast for hundreds of thousands of people and i think you fucking nailed it well i'm glad you didn't say the hundreds of thousand people before now because (laughs) (laughs) i appreciate it a lot thank you very much for having us on and for having me on i cannot wait for this week so y'all are awesome i really appreciate the support y'all are great thanks thanks charlie i'll see you this week all right take care see you man i want to say that guy was great I want to say that I am excited to be at the PJ Championship, and I'm going to excited to see what sort of shenanigans that Frankie and I can get ourselves involved in over the next couple of days. But you guys talking about how we are now running a real golf tournament with these young women, these young collegiate golfers. I want to watch that now. And I, but I, I, I'm sad that I can't be there. We're going to be having a fun time here. But that's going to be fucking awesome. Rick. Dude, coming down like 18, like I don't know what the format is. Like is there going to be like a final hole? Like what is the format? I don't know that you've really explained that yet. Yeah, so it's a good question. The uh, So there's, there's two simultaneous competitions going on, which is there's 54 holes of stroke play. Um, that doesn't change. That's just what it is. Everybody plays three rounds of golf. Um, there's an individual competition. So just whichever individual shoots the lowest score over three rounds of golf. Very simple. There's a champion. We're getting trophies for first, second, and third. There's also now, which was greenlit by the NCAA um, via a waiver, as allowed to be an official um, team competition. So um, it's up to me to ultimately make this call. But what they would usually do would be five scores so they they uh they travel a lot of times with six or seven or eight or nine and they pick you know their top five they want that round to play and they just do a cumulative score to par and after however many rounds whoever's got the lowest score is the team like wins that tournament and um and for this for the ltp it's different because not every team is able to send all of their girls. Some of them flew home. Some of them couldn't make it. You know, we have 48 committed now out of what the possible 78. So if a school just has four, like I don't want them to not be eligible for the team competition. We'd only have three teams in the whole thing. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're either going to count three, um, but you can start as many as you brought to the tournament and you just get your top three. So if your team only sent three, you have, clearly a little bit of a disadvantage because all three of your girls had to play really well. Um, or we could do four, which would eliminate a couple teams, Oregon state sending three. Um, and I think a few others are only sending three. I'm leaning towards doing three scores count every round. Um, but you can use all of your team. So yeah, if like you, have three, yeah. you gotta do three. It's let them play, get everybody involved in this. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank you. And imagine and you guys, having a let them play competition and, and, <laughs> and not allowing the teams that have sent three to play. That would be the ultimate. Like, it's a misnomer. Yeah. 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 You just didn't let them play. It's crazy. Um, you, you guys would love it though. Like I, there are the coaches from the different teams now, depending on how many people they're bringing are lobbying me behind the scenes. So like the teams that brought five are like, 
well, yeah, if you, it's a, this is what we do every week. If you didn't bring five, like, what do you, like you're not eligible for the team competition. So there's a lot of lobbying going on, um, you know, and, and so I think like, it would be door per- deals happening here. Right? <laughs> there's no deals. Uh, there's no deals. Like I very clearly at the beginning was like, I need to lean on you guys because I really want to make sure we do it. Like what's consistent with how, um, you know, the girls usually play. And then, uh, and then now I'm like, actually, I'm just going to make all the calls. <laughs> there's no, yeah. you know. So, so when you say like the NCA has greenlit this and there's a waiver, I, I think I'm very confused on like what that actually means. Like, is, is this yeah. like count towards these guys, these girls stats? Does it count towards like the school stats? Like, like what does this actually mean? So it's a, it's a permitted, but not NCAA sanctioned event. Okay. And what that means is, before they submitted this waiver or they approved this waiver that they approved this morning, Monday morning, um, we actually weren't even necessarily getting like a green light or any approvals from the NCAA. We were mostly just going around rules that could have been violations. So what we were doing was like the girls can play, the young women can play in um, an off season event as an individual, whenever they want, like, that's just, as long as they're not, you know, getting anything that violates NCA compliance from a gift standpoint and prizes and all that. Um, so we were just one of those, like their season's over. And if they want to play and compete as an individual, whether it's trying to win the U S amateur or whether it's trying to win the LTP classic, like good for you, go for it. You're not doing anything wrong. Um, but that's clearly not the spirit of college golf because college golf is about going with your teammates and, and you all, you know, and so what the what um, Charlie there and Steve Smith at uh, Miss, Mississippi State and what Purdue's compliance office and what our internal, our legal team, we hired outside counsel, by the way, who specializes in NCA compliance to work on this stuff. What they were able to get approved was this waiver that the NCA actually had to like sign off on and approve where they will allow um, the coaches to coach their players because that's not allowed in the individual competition if it was only that either. Um, so they can literally like give them reads and help them out about club selections and stuff. Um, and they get to compete as a team wearing their school gear. So, you wow. know, they get to wear their, their stuff and, and compete as a collegiate college golf, women's golf team, um, which they weren't going to be allowed to do up until this morning. So when, when Steve Smith was running through the hallways, trying to find Charlie there and, and give him the good news, that's what he was giving him, which is really cool. That's awesome. That'll be huge. Great. Like, School colors, school, the whole thing. Then wear the, the bags, probably the, the 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 uniforms and all that. It's going to make it very very legit. And just you're right, the bags is huge. Off. I'm not ready for the but college golf bags are awesome. Sick. Yeah, hearing They're that Steve sick. Smith is running through the hallways is like reading a book. Where I think everybody in this room just and everybody listening just has a different image of who the Steve Smith guy is. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see a picture of this man. Yeah, Carolina so Panthers. Uniform. I'm yeah. I'm picturing. <laughs> I'm picturing the football player. I think that's what everybody's picturing. <laughs> Steve Smith in full Carolina pads and uniform <laughs> running down the hallway with a sheet of paper that says this is now an NCAA. You know, sanctioned Steve event Smith or whatever. seniors. Right. Is that who that is? Right. Uh, My yeah. brain's telling me that's not possible, but there's a little piece of me like, no, that's Steve Smith from the Carolina Panthers, or uh, that you know went to Utah. He's running down the hall. I don't know what Steve Smith, the football player, is doing. He could be a <laughs> compliance guy at uh, Mississippi State. I don't know. <laughs> what a career pivot that would be. Could you imagine? <laughs> I still, I want to. I don't want to go too far away from this, but I still really don't know what happened in Baton Rouge. I, I don't me have a clue. Either. Like it seems like, like there's more to it than there than anyone is letting on. Like for them to the, just make that announcement and say it's playable, but it's not playable at a championship level. And then, like Riggs said uh, when we were talking to Charlie, just figure it out. Like figure out a, a new place to go play, or figure move the tees, or or do something. The fact that they were just like, we can't figure it out, so we're just gonna scrap this whole thing. It just doesn't it doesn't add up in my mind. I think everybody's he also mentioned playing the too, same he, golf course. It's like what? Yeah, and, right. And, and uh, Mr. Ewing there said, uh, like, are, are you guys just not, like, doing everything you can to just make it happen? And I think that's the right. real open-ended question. I mean, we can go around and around a million times. NCA has to just answer that at some point where it's like, yeah, like, we didn't, like, 
I mean, they may never answer the question, but I, it seems as though that was the thing. Like, do you want to go out and spend the money or make the workers go out there and, like, squeegee the fucking fairways just like they did last week uh, for the men uh, in, the PG, uh, for, in the PGA tournament where they were getting dumped on and they just figured it out and they finished the golf tournament and that's just what happens, right? Like, you just figure it out. And they saw this tournament and they're like, nope, we're not going to figure it out. We'd rather just not do that and just move on. Top six teams advance, the rest of you go home. So, yeah, I don't know that we'll ever get that answer to be honest i don't like what are they going to do like yeah we just didn't care like they're never going to say that and it's you know i've heard whispers of like there were there were people trying to force their way into like committee meetings that were happening that weren't like being allowed into meetings there's um an an underlying fact that like this thing was at lsu lsu was one of the teams that was just waved through because of the you know, like the top teams just go go through in advance. So it's like it, it, there's just a lot of smoke and there was a really bad result. And clearly there's more to the story. And again, I know like J- Matt Janelle, who's a storyteller, has been like he's been texting me that he's got some some tea, as the kids say, on the whole situation. So there's clearly more to the story. We're not like journalists or reporters, so um, we'd probably never get to the bottom of it. We just Shocker. kind of actually just make really vague like takes on the whole thing that it could be true or not <laughs> well what we, we do we is tweet we tweet it into existence you know? right we we pick up the pieces you know what we do and Riggs in particular in this scenario we figure it out like you just figure it out that's Riggs did what what the nca and i don't want to harp on them too much because i know we're, you're working with them a little bit but like you figure it out when they just couldn't figure it out and now it's a huge opportunity for barstool this is going to be under the barstool umbrella this this collegiate women's golf tournament it's going to be fantastic and and the nca just dropped the ball and we picked it up it's going to be fun man this week is going to be really fun when they when they arrive they got practice rounds on wednesday um, and it's going to be, you know, you know, we've put on 30 something events now. And like Frankie was saying, this is going to be very different. Like these yeah. are the best girls of their age that are, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 years old at playing golf in the country. Like they are division one college golfers who have advanced to regionals and had a chance to go to nationals and contend for a national championship. Like, they are the future of golf and they're really good and they work really hard and they grind and they're just going to be playing in a tournament that we um, put together and spearheaded. And uh, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun to watch. It'll be fun to watch like really good golf. It's going to be fun to announce them all on the tee. I'm going to, I have to study names because at the Barstool Classic, I can just fuck up people's names and it's funny. Um, But this feels like it'd be disrespectful if I'm butchering people's names up on the first tee with a microphone in my hand. Um, so we're going to be announcing them on the tee. Um, we got a few surprises in store that um, that we can't reveal yet, but will be revealed at the tournament that I think are going to be really cool. So, um, so yeah, I'm excited. I think a lot of people are excited. We'll be putting out footage all over. I know people are like broadcast it, live stream it. Um, we are going to obviously go live on on social media. Um, I, there's no way we could broadcast a golf tournament like the actual the people that are actually paid to broadcast the tournament can't even broadcast the tournament well yeah. so, so like, uh, but we're going to be putting stuff all over every social media channel and going live and doing live streams from the t and from the 18th green so there'll be plenty of coverage hey are there going to be fans there will be fans i just met with the golf course today and um and i i went and observed the first t area and the 18th green area and i just said you know how do you guys feel about spectators like yeah we're very open to spectators and i said you know like if I tweet about this, like people are going to show up. Right. And they were like, yeah. And I was like, I, I had a guy email me that was like, Hey, I'm on a bachelor party with 16 people. Um, we're going to cancel our golf Thursday. (laughs) We're coming. (laughs) And I was like, you know, you guys got like, people are coming. So, um, you know, they're teeing off early Thursday. So the plan is 7 30 AM, uh tea times on thursday and then they'll tee off on the other course so they're going to be playing the um, cattail course thursday morning and then the devil's claw course starting at about 12 31 p.m in the afternoon so i think by the time we get to that first tee in the afternoon maybe around noon one o'clock it's a nice you know 90 degree day here and in, in sunny phoenix arizona uh i think you might see some stuff and then friday the first tee times 9 a.m and the girls are going to basically be finishing their seasons and their college careers you know around one two three o'clock um on a friday afternoon like 
A, I'm going to be bawling my eyes out and B, there's probably going to be some people there and it's going to be, it's going to be really cool. It's just going to be so cool. I'm very excited. For it. I'm picturing now like the waste management, just like, it just, right. yeah. Man, yeah. pretty much just when people are canceling their bachelor party. Like the, the LTB could be now just the premier go- college end of career golf tournament. that just happens. Like this could well, be now just an annual thing. Just like Charlie was saying, when he first saw Riggs's tweet where he tweeted the tournament into existence, if we put out word that, hey, spectators are allowed, come on to our golf tournament, people will show up. They will. Oh, God, yeah. And that's what I was explaining. They're like, do we need, like, beverage cards? And I was like, how many do you got? Because it's yeah, going to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I think people are going to show up. So if you're around, show up. Like, these these <laughs> girls have a, these, these girls, young women. And, and I will say that um, I saw some people that were, like, um, trying to correct me. They're like. Don't call them girls, call them women. And I'm like, well, look, I, if I was talking about when I play, played college hockey, I wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, um, me and, like, the men have a 7 p.m. game. It would be like, yeah, me and the boys got a game at, like, 7 p.m. So it's like that's – that's even when you talk to the college coach, like, yeah, my girls are ready to go. They're fired up. So uh, so that's just, like, anybody – that's kind of driving me crazy if people are freaking out. I was actually that. having a conversation about that just the other day. When does girls switch to a woman? When, when does that take place that you say, like, no, the women are playing? I don't think the four of us are going to make that. No. Well, like the same with like boys and men. Like, when does that? I'm still not a man. Right. So right. like, and maybe True. it's different right. for everybody, honestly. Right. Maybe, maybe it is based on like personality. Maybe it's like, what is your maturity level? But for me, like even today, I, it's like, yeah, me and the boys got a tea time at like at two o'clock. And it's like, you know, that's just what it is. So, right. um, well, well, listen, the people who are, correcting that or, or whatever you want to say Fair. Yeah, it's been a tough couple a days time. it's been a tough couple days for the barstool haters i will say so <laughs> yeah it has big like time if that's the only thing they can pick then that's what it's going to be Fair. So I'm trying to say young women as much as I can, but even that just doesn't, that doesn't even sound real. That sounds like makes I'm you forcing sound 85. <laughs> that's made you sound like an asshole. That's trying too hard. It's like, no, the girls are playing. Like let the girls fucking play. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm just saying girls and people have an issue with it. We'll cross that bridge. We'll solve that issue another time. But anyways, it's been, it's been hectic. It's going to be so cool. Like seeing them arrive Wednesday and check out the course for the first time. They're going to be serious. I know that like, they're going to be taking notes. They're going to be grinding on the golf course. They're going to be coming up with strategy, what clubs they're going to hit on certain tees going over with coaches, like, and they're ready to go. They're like, they're it's, it's competition. They're fired up. Um, it, it's just going to be, it's going to be a very meaningful thing that, that we're doing. And, um, and it's going to be happening at the same time as a major championship, which you guys are at, which is just hard to comprehend. I think I'm a cigar guy on the golf course now, fellas. Let's I think you just, go. I think I'm just a cigar guy on the golf course. I um, I want to talk a little bit more about this, you know, on Thursday show. We can let it air out and let it breathe a little bit more. But uh, amid all this chaos of putting together this tournament, I had planned this just like bucket list weekend with my brother in Pebble because we were going to be out in California anyways for the Classic. And, um, and we got to Pebble on Friday afternoon. My brother flew all the way across the country from St. Louis. He's got two young kids. And, uh, and we, we were the last tee time off Pebble Beach. We played 17 and 18, like right as the sun was setting and it was getting dark. And on the 10th tee, we just lit up a couple of Macanudo cigars. I went with the orange label. He went with the white. And, uh, and my buddy Chad was there. He went with the orange as well. And, man, I can't tell you how many times everybody just took it out and said, this is so enjoyable right now. It really oh, yeah. enhances your experience, man. It's uh, for pictures, for experience, like for the, for actually being there. Just everything about it just makes it look cooler, right? Like you just know you're in a moment. Whenever I'm smoking a cigar, and especially a Macanoodle, I know that it's a moment. I actually became, over the years – the guy in my friend group that would bring the cigars to big moments. It would be like new year's Eve. We'd all be going to a place and they knew like at some point in the night, I was going to just like kind of flash like a big bag of just Mac and like 10 Mac and cigars. And everyone's going to be like, Oh, like he brought the cigars. Like it's, and we're going to go outside on a cold evening and we're going to fucking, we're going to toke those things as a toke. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's toke with a T. So oh, I don't know if you're toke a cigar. I think, I think you're toking smoke. it. I think you're toking no. a cigar, man. I think you're toking it. I'm pretty confident in that, to be honest. Mm. I think you toke a cigar. We'll we'll 
we'll shelf that for a little bit. <laughs> but what I want to say is it just enhances your uh, your experience and it makes it a moment. So when you're at Pebble Beach, that's a moment. You're not just golfing. You 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 have a cigar and and it just adds to it. There's just something about it. Uh-huh. Sorry well, to stop there. Hundred percent. Really brought the show to a halt very, there. It was a very pointed, Woo! pointed way that you. That was a moment. Never... Somebody, somebody should have lit up a cigar there, that because that was a real moment. I right wish there. I could have, man. And you know what? We learned how to do it um, from Macanudos, and I've now adopted what they've said. Like you, you have all these cutters and stuff, and you really don't need to cut the side that you're going to be smoking out of. You just need. You can use your fingertips, your fingernail, and just all you have to do is expose that side of the cigar um there's a very fine um thin casing on the side that you are going to be actually putting your mouth on and you just need to expose that part to uh enjoy the cigar so don't be chopping off lumber off that thing take as little amount off as possible so that you have an enjoyable experience uh please enter to win a limited edition branded golf set and a humidor for your macanudo inspirado smokes the inspirado white the inspirado orange they're awesome at macanudo.com slash barstool 21 plus only for entry but enter to win a limited edition branded golf set and a humidor for your macanudo inspirado smokes go to macanudo.com slash barstool 21 plus for entry Barstool Sportsbook, and to get a little PGA Championship talk in here, Barstool Sportsbook has the leader of Rory McIlroy at eleven to one. Um, we we all agree that this man should be the favorite oh, wow. going into the PGA Championship. Yeah, really. He just won the history. The guy hasn't won a major in what? The guy hasn't won a major in seven years. Yeah, and but we're just he, gonna he's he gonna did, waltz when he, in. Won, when he was winning, he won one here by eight strokes. So I, I think he feels Good pretty point. comfortable here. You can get on the Barcelona Sportsbook Kevin Kisner a two hundred and fifty to one to win this major championship. You throw a hundred oh bucks on this God. guy, throw a hundred bucks on this guy. You're, you're cashing in twenty five thousand dollars. I mean, I, I, I mean, be, I'd be what are we doing around here? His uh, his swing coach might be preoccupied with me because I'm going to go over there and I need I need to talk to JT. <laughs> One of my favorite things so. uh, that I'm looking forward to this week is that uh, um, yes. Uh, you the what's the word I'm looking for the uh, rekindling the rekindling maybe of JT and his uh, his baby cub now I mean that's what Trent <laughs> is to JT he has this he has this deer that's trying to walk on the ice Bambi style and he's trying to turn him into this nice fucking grizzled animal on the golf course Lurch you haven't been on the podcast in a minute and you really have missed a lot of like the you know. We talked about Trent and I went to go break 100 the other day, and his swing, mm. it's got it's a locomotive now. I mean, it's the the knees are the moving from left it? to right. It's unbelievable what's going on in the lower body. But it's what it's the very I much. Saw him hit was off the charts. It's one. It's it's Bambi though. It's I. Mm-hmm. It's Bambi on ice, <laughs> it's Bambi. and we just don't know how to walk mm-hmm. yet. So I'm very interested to see uh, your guys' relationship up up close because he's got a lot of work with you to go. T, do you have yeah. a lot of power now? You finding some power in that bottom half? Yes. How far do you think my first drive went, Frankie? Sorry, what was that? How oh, how far do you think my first drive went off the first tee? Two seventy five with a nice draw right down the middle. Shut I mean, up. S- split the yeah. fairway right in half. He split That's the fairway the better than I the saw. fucking maintenance crew did. Yeah, it's <laughs> but again, we're dancing around it. But like, I you know, I got to be. Able I, to I'm do- not over exaggerating either. It was like two seventy five. It right. no, it was oh, a good no. drive. Because I, mean, I piped one swing, and he was have, 20 yards ahead of me. It was crazy. Yeah, you're going to have I, probably a bigger miss. Like you're, It's going to get worse before it gets better, but yeah. you're on a better it, path. We've yes. said it was. he went through surgery, and now it's time for – he went through post-op a little bit. Now it's physical therapy. And sometimes physical therapy, it hurts more before it gets better. And, you know, we just got to get these guys on the bands. We got to get him – we got to get him doing wrist curls. And it's going to be a fucking grind. You're going to hate – your 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 physical therapist. You're gonna fucking hate him at times. No, nope. I'm sure well, you already. Di- uh, I'm, you know, at times you're just like, "Fuck you, JT." Like, why do I have to bend this thing, this bowling ball, in half? But you know what? He's gonna fucking. I'm sorry about that. But he's gonna make you do things that you're not used to, and we're gonna see that in that series. Like you're laying on the ground in these previews. Right. So Jake has been going through all the footage, and there's a, there's a lot of footage, and we're chopping it all up, and we're trying to figure out what the release dates are, what the, what the videos are going to be. And there are parts of these videos where I am just so exhausted and I <laughs> sweat is pouring off my head. It's basically falling on the JT as he tries to, you know, ignite my lower half. And it's, you know, 
I love JT. He, him and I, uh, we get along great. He took me out on the on the lake, obviously, and I tried to wake surf. But yeah, I'm excited to see him on this trip. Um, I'm just part of his stable now. It's like me, Kevin Kisner, Ricky Fowler. It's just we're all in this together, and I, I'm excited to see him. And I need to talk to him about the last round that we played because I need to clean some things up. Do we you have? Shoot? Uh, we're not, we're, we're gonna, not we're revealing gonna keep that. Okay. Get behind locked, I'll close door, I will, seal it uh, forever. I'll text you the number when we're done. Ooh, fun. I'd, like to see his, I'd like to see his facial reaction when you send it. Can you send it now? Yeah, yeah um, I get to see this too. I haven't seen it either. Oh, you want? I yeah. All right. Why yeah, we do know, that? I'm picturing why he's why he's doing this. I'm picturing Trent's face on like Bambi, just like with his knees going everywhere. <laughs> All right, I just sent it. We're gonna wow. have to give. It's it's Monday. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> Whoa! Where was this at? Brookville, Brookville Country Club. Um, Joey Lacava was on the scene. We've talked about that a little bit, um, and yeah, it was uh, it was a scene. But we're, that video is going to come out, and it's going to be fucking awesome. And people are going to be along for the ride. What I do want to get out of you guys before we do um, end this podcast is I want to get everyone's picks. It's Monday of a major championship. Things are going to change. Some guys are going to come out with practice videos. We're going to see guys on the – me and Trent are going to be up close and personal on the range. We're going to be able to get a good vibe. So I want to do something going in ice cold. Everyone give a pick. Uh, maybe we'll give a real pick, and then we'll also give a sleeper, someone that would just fucking shock the world. Do you guys and if see that, the if that wants to be a real pick? Golf by the, course that? No, what is it going to be? A little over seven, eight hundred yards. Yeah, it's a fucking poke. So that's why Kevin Kisner's two hundred fifty to one. Correct. Kevin Kisner can't play that golf course. He I just would figured tell like that. it's South Carolina. It's nice weather. Like Kiz likes this shit. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of close to his home, right? I mean, kind of, I guess. I don't know. Where are we in relation to where pretty he is? Pretty fucking south. I don't know. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's just from he's just from that that this like area, right? So that, I mean, like that state. So it's like, yeah, that's <laughs> so we're in the same state, state for sure. I, but that's yeah, good. <laughs> man, if it wasn't seventy eight hundred yards, man. Um, fuck. I'll go. So I um, I placed a wager before we left Philadelphia. That's on, right. Jordan Spieth uh, at 14 to 1 plus 1400 on the Barstool Sportsbook to win the PGA Championship. And I was up big. I had a great, great showing in Philadelphia. And I put $500 on Jordan Spieth to win the PGA Championship. And that's the only wager that I have on it because I'm now not in a state where it's legal. Um, so I am, I am picking Jordan Spieth. He shot 18 under par this past week and finished tied for ninth. So I like that. That was like, you know, he hasn't played much golf really since um, the masters, like almost none. Um, and, uh, and people might not know this cause I really didn't want to, I didn't want to talk about it, but I played in a member guest tournament a few weeks ago and I played um, in a match against Michael Greller and bones who were just awesome guys. And we had beers for like an hour afterwards and the vibe that I got about him and his feeling about Jordan speed's game um, that's my pick for this week. And I, it, people understand that like, you know, when you're, when you, when we're in the kind of some of the circles that we somehow find ourselves in, which is amazing, you don't want to violate that stuff and be the guy that like tells every word that you've ever had. So I'll just say that bones and Greller are just salt of the earth guys. You could possibly be. And the vibe that I got from Greller was that Jordan Spieth is on to something pretty special right now. So I've got Jordan Spieth winning the PJ championship. Wow. Lurch. Hey, fuck it. You fucking like that Lurch? I do. I'm going to take John Rom, actually. Rombo. Ooh. 14 Rombo. to 1. What are his odds? 14 to 1? I'm yep. going to take Rom to come in and take this thing. Do you what have is anyone? Speed that now? What is Speed that now? Did he speed change? Speed is still uh, at 14 to 1. Oh, he is. Oh, good. Hell yeah. So, I think... Long shot? You want a long shot too, Frank? Yeah, give me someone just from the back pocket. Like you're just keeping them away, tucked in there for a nice fucking warm day. <laughs> keep that keep that guy tucked in there about your side. Fitzpatrick, I'll pick. Ooh, oh. I think I think he was rolling in at thirty three to one. He's not as bad as it was. Yeah, God, fifty to one. All right, 50 that's fifty one. 51. 51. That's deep. Fifty one is deep. Uh, Trent, you got a, You got a guy from me this week. I'm just I'm just scrolling the Barcelona Sports of sportsbook app right now trying to trying to look at some names here you know what would be amazing if tony finau just broke all the way through and won 
a, a major. That would make me very, very happy. He's 33 to one right now. I'm going to. Uh, Phoenix 30. Gonna... Yeah, 30. That's good one. odds for that man. That How about this odds. one? How about this one? Tommy Fleetwood is plus 6,600 to win the PGA Championship. Dude, there's value on the back half. Yeah, sixty-six no, they're... to one. Even Mark Get Leishman. On the book and I can see. Ma- I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Mark Leishman. That's my pick. Wow. Mark Leishman wow. is gonna That's is gonna be wild. is gonna be my dark horse. Fifty-five to one. He's plus fifty-five hundred in the Barstool Sportsbook. Leash is gonna be my pick. Uh, my my dark horse pick. You want to know who my fucking dark horse is? <laughs> and yeah. I think this guy. We we've talked about him in the Ricky last couple Ballard. podcasts. You know, I was between him, but. For some reason, his name just keeps popping up. He he popped up on an ad the other day um, when I was going through something. And I looked at him and I was like, I couldn't believe he was still alive. And now I'm trying to look at what his odds were. They have to be horrible. Hold on now. Who is what it? I... Francesco Molinari. I think he's legitimately 150 to one out here. And I just I, would... I don't think that he would win, but I want to put Francesco Molinari in a top. 25 bet on the Barcelona sports book, right? Like get this guy back in the mix. I saw him in this ad. It was like he was promoting some sort of whatever. And he just looked like the Francesco Molinari of like early 2019. I'm like that guy. You thought he was back. You thought he was back. It's just like that guy has it in him, right? Just like we've argued about Jordan Spieth and Rory McIlroy at some point, like Francesco Molinari did it. He stared into Tiger Woods, soul. Uh, during the open and just fucking beat like you know what I mean like this guy can do it he knows how to do it and and when you have that much value on a guy in a major championship a guy that knows how to uh, tame the crowds and a, a guy that knows how to stare down the belly of the beast Francesco Molinari when you're talking about putting 50 25 bucks on a guy why not Francesco Molinari why not Frankie I love some of the things you say. Stare down the belly of the beast. That's you just threw <laughs> two sayings together, and I, I appreciate that. Now what's the what's now what's the belly of the beast? What's the you're beginning just in of the... the belly of the beast, right? Yeah, but then but then Frankie is staring down the belly of the beast, right? And he's not I, scared. No, I, I'm picturing that whale, uh, like old school. What's what's the like Moby Dick I feel or like something? I've heard that before, and I'm just yeah. st- I'm just like walking into the mouth. I'm fucking in the belly of the beast. I'm staring that's what it, it is. down. I think you walk. I think you walk into the belly of the beast. Is it Moby Dick? Is that where that comes from? No idea. I was Sorry. envisioning Moby Dick too. If that makes Jonah. sense. Jonah, Jonah, is that biblical? Uh, it's biblical. Jonah okay. and the whale. So um, Frankie, who, who's your favorite pick though? So you got Molinari in the back pocket. It sucks. It sucks, but it's Justin Thomas. Like Justin Thomas okay. has to win Just a fucking golf defender. tournament. Okay. I think he's fourteen to one. He may be fourteen or eighteen to one. Yeah, I, I will ride Justin Thomas. I will get that in. I, I'm I'm telling you right now, this guy has to. He uh, Justin Thomas is going to come here to Kiowa and he's going to have. Bro, he's putting up fucking videos. He's feeling good. He put yeah, up him one and today. Homer are kind of feeling each other. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what it is though. I, I'm. I think I'm getting. I think I'm getting swindled by this Pip thing. These guys are so much more on social media. It's crazy. Justin Thomas put up a video oh, I know. that crazy. I shared like with a bunch of my buddies. Like he put up a video. It was like a hundred and he goes, uh, right. two Oh five to the pin. It's playing one eighty five to the front, 15 mile an hour on the wind. What are you taking? And it got me going. I'm like, what are you taking? He's taking a four iron. I'm like, fuck. He's getting like more money now because I just shared it 10 times. And the analytics are like, these guys have me by the ball. But it's set. working. But like the, that's mm-hmm. the PGA tours thing that they did is working. That's Correct. why. Like, uh, yeah. I know. I'm gonna that's actually. Organic, that's organic conversation created by Justin. Thomas. I hope we see Justin Thomas tomorrow because I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna chirp him a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna chirp him a little bit about his. Uh, his... <laughs> Riggs is just like Woo. I love the player impact program. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a good program. Yeah, well, that's that's a great grow, program. Grow the game. <laughs> grow the game. That's, you know. You know who I would like to win? I want Patrick Reed to win just to piss off some people. I feel like we haven't Ooh. had Patrick Reed pissing people off lately, and I need some That's more. That's a good one. That's a real good I'd one. I'd also yeah, like to run into him this week. I, I want to talk to Patrick Reed. would love to run into Patrick Reed, and, and Justin Thomas doesn't know what he has coming to him. He, he he put up that fucking Penguins post, and he's entered the belly of the beast, and you know he's got me down his throat this week. He, he thinks he has Kiowa and 7,800 yards. That guy never should have stepped into my world because I'm going to be giving it to him tomorrow. To he's playing all... you like a fiddle. He shared the video. You reached it. He's now got you in his back pocket. You know what? (laughs) In the pip world, yes, but in the hockey world, I'm fucking on him. 
Right. When when you start talking about hockey, Frankie's just got blinders on. He'll he'll yeah, walk into any trap he sees. Lurch wasn't here, but like Joey Lacava, we're having a drink with them. We're in the. He mentioned like the Rangers. I'm like Joey, you're fucking dead, buddy. I'm like I basically like pushed him into a corner. I had a finger on his on his chest. I'm like Joey, your Rangers stink. Just the nicest man in the world. He had no idea what happened. Boys, well, you know what I'm holding right here? Those uh, are some shorts, man. Those are some shorts. Those are some I'm salmon little... colored shorts. Peter Millar's seaside line. And this wow. line, these are some trunks right here. These are some Peter Millar what? swim trunks right here. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, I was going to say you those look very uh, nautical, very swimmy. Yeah, because they're seaside. Very That's swimmy. That's seaside. the guy who's in the ocean all the time. <laughs> those look very it. swimmy. <laughs> Huge ocean guy. Those Listen, are I'm gonna, there, buddy. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take five on this ad read here because we all know I'm not wearing shorts anytime soon. Lurch, you weren't on the last podcast when we did a Peter Millar ad read, but I think I'm gonna become a shorts guy this summer, and I'm gonna wear a bunch of Peter Millar shorts. Oh, those are nice. That's prints. great. What what swayed you? Was it the nautical line? No. Well, yeah, the seaside line is great, and that definitely was a step in the right direction. But someone, I think it might have been our producer Jake, when we were in Georgia, he made a comment about my legs. And it gave me a little bit of confidence, and now I kind of want to showcase them a little bit more. I think I'm you going to. Way. Yeah, you should. You Thank just you. like Frankie. Like you guys got to get early in the season, show your legs because nobody wants to see a set of pasty whites in July or August. You got to have the, some confidence. The pigment's not my issue, season. dude. The, the pink is not my issue, dude. It's like when you get a when you get a a, a, a nice basket of like on the bone chicken wings. You go after the meaty ones first, and then those little ones that just have a little bit of skin around the bone, and you're like, "Man, I got gypped out of this shit. I don't even want to eat that." Like, is that was that was that chicken sick? Was that was that thing even oh. healthy? Like, is that is that a sickly piece of meat? Like, that's my leg, man. I've just got bone and skin. Like, you ever think about how us humans we are just like we're skeletons? You know, I'm gonna ever, take like, advantage. Your mind? I'm so gonna take advantage I, of the shorts. I, I, I'm I just a skeleton. I can't talk about skeletons with you right now. Uh, anyways, the seaside is hands down the most <laughs> laid back apparel from Peter Millar. They're using special washes and techniques to make sure these are the softest clothes in your closet. They truly are. They're just incredible. Um, you can check out their whole seaside collection at petermillar.com slash four and receive free shipping and a complimentary gift with your purchase. That's free shipping, complimentary gift with your purchase. Please check out their Seaside collection because this stuff is hands down the most laid back stuff. PeterMillar.com slash four. I can't wait to see the golf course. We're in this little area right now, the Kiowa Island. We're in these tree houses. Um, <laughs> everything about this place looks very cool, very coastal, very um, in the trees. But you can you can almost like hear the ocean in the background. So. Yep. I'm very excited. Uh, Trent and I are actually going to go, um, you know, find a place to eat. I don't know. I think places are like just open here in South Carolina on Kiwa Island. It may be kind of tough, but you know, it's about nine o'clock on a Monday. We'll see what's open. We'll see if we can get some local grub as the people say, as the tourists say. So, um, I'm excited. It's a, it's a major championship week. So it's a big I got, week for uh, the got, boys. Yeah, the, it's huge. Yeah, it Speaking is. of the boys, it's a big week for the boys. We're, we're making some things happen. I got very for, for, I'm just very excited for you guys to get to the course and and start firing up the text group about it because I've heard that Kiowa is stunning. I know Lurch has been there. I heard it's just like it's stunning. Well, dude, I looked up it's, pictures because I you, when you see it online, right? You see it uh, obviously the 2012 PGA was here, but um, you don't like you can't understand how people can come and like attend this venue. There's just fucking bunkers everywhere. There's no grass. It's just. It's like dunes. I've never seen I, – I can't imagine how they're going to do this. So I looked up pictures from 2012, and guys are just standing in the bunkers. I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of people legitimately just standing in dunes, like dirty as can be. And that's another thing. Like I have all like light-colored pants, like a fucking idiot. Now I'm just thinking about that. I'm going to look like a mess walking around the dirt. I don't have one pair of dark pants in my entire fucking luggage now that I I'm think gonna about it. I'm going to take so many pictures of you. That's going to be great. God damn. I'm going to look like a fucking – I don't know. I'm, I'm going to look like I just w crawled out of Shawshank Redemption. What yeah, that uh, course, what a that course is incredible, though. It's like – it's mind-boggling. Are you guys going to go walk it tomorrow or get a sense of it, or what's the, what's the plan? 
we're there um, early tomorrow. We're going to get there right when the doors open. So we'll be there when the first guys tee off for their practice round. We'll be there until the last guy tees off. Then we got Islanders hockey. Um, and then we'll be there Wednesday. And then Thursday we're heading into Charleston so that we can do the uh, meet and greet. And we can get Liddy Titty, as the kids say. So, so I will tomorrow's say a big that day. Course, that's the course <laughs> where I, we did an impromptu buddies trip. Four of us went down, played great at Turtle, and then had – I think I've told this story on a podcast where I had 17 double vodkas. Couldn't right. see straight the next day. Shot 101. Lost every which way I possibly could to my buddies. Um, but it's an amazing golf course that's honestly just impossible. If the wind blows, I don't know how people are going to do that. But like JT's point, I think that's the 17th that hole, that par three, that's 220 all carry over water with a thousand alligators, honestly, in that little pond. Um so I, I, it's going to be a great week to golf, and it's going to butcher people, and the scores are going to be outrageous. Uh, I can't wait to watch. So, uh, so I just texted Max Homa, who has been um, is extremely supportive about the LTP, and texted me, and I said, if I had to read one thing from Max Homa live on the pod right now about Kiowa, what would it be? And he said, if you drive it really long and straight, you can definitely make at least a couple birdies a day if you hit your irons well. LOL. And then he said. I really hope that's actually going on the pod because that actually just made me laugh a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> I think the MO is that it's playing very hard, and um, and that's what we like to see. I may take one for the boys tomorrow. So it's like 80 degrees here, but I thought maybe if I shorts. wear – we. No, I'm not going to take wear shorts. I'm going to actually do the opposite. We have these Barstool Golf um, four-play hoodies, right? These champion hoodies that they're on the Barstool store. And there's just a fucking huge four-play logo on your chest. And I'm like, man, that'd be nice to wear because like, out here, it's kind of hard like for guys to – especially with masks on, sometimes you're in the ropes. Like, who is who? I'm walking around with a fucking advertisement on my chest. Like, that may be nice for, like – like getting a guy's eye and like, oh fuck, it's four play guys. Let's let me go say hi to him. But the other thing is like, it's gonna be eighty degrees. Am I wearing a hoodie around here? So I may have to take one for the boys. And I mean, you guys know I don't like to show skin, so I'll be happy as a fucking clam. But I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I think I'm gonna wear a hoodie to fucking Kiwa. Be the only person on the on the property for sure. Do it for the team, please. Yeah. Do it for the team. Um, did either one? What kind of shoes did you guys pack? I got my G4, those blue ones, the the blue just kind of like walking shoes because, yeah. you know, they're, they're dark. I figure walking in the dirt and they have a little bit of traction. So I, I kind of kill two birds with one stone there. I'm not going to get made fun of by the fucking golf, the, the people that call us golf artists for wearing golf shoes to golf championships because they do look like sneakers. And what they do not know is that they're actually turf shoes and they have traction. So I, I just straight up rock golf shoes. So. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I just I'm going to be wearing they're the nice. They're the white G4 ones. So they kind of look sick. like sneakers, but I don't give a fuck. They're going to get they're, dirty. They're going to get dirty there, but they're going to be comfortable. Like I'm going to wear what's going to be comfortable. And I just don't care what anyone thinks. That's <laughs> <laughs> just what uh, it boils down to. Uh, all right, fellas. Well, look, I'm excited to see the coverage. I'm very excited to hear your guys uh, impulse reactions from getting out to Kiowa for the first time, because I've heard it. Like I said, that it's just awesome. <laughs> Got two idiots like me and Trent are just like these two guys. Just like I can't. It's just gonna be fucking awesome walking in there. Like, the, like every time we get these fucking passes, I'm like, are you guys sure? Are you sure you want to give right. me these things? <laughs> like it's no secret that we're fucking idiots. Like I, I don't know. Like Riggs is pretty. He's a professional guy, and he kind of keeps me and Frankie in line for the most part. <laughs> and so when like it's, I mean, it's this is gonna be three days of the Brian Bomb. Baumgartner interview just we're just at a major championship me and Frankie get to do whatever we want like that's a that's a nightmare yeah, scenario like, potential. mom and dad le left you guys home alone for the first yeah. time and it's right. like we're not, who knows what's gonna happen and our goal is to talk to a couple of really good golfers about the championship that they are about to participate in and if we can get a couple chuckles out of them then you know what it's a great weekend and we go into uptown social and we fucking clash and clang some Owens mixers and we celebrate a great week and we get ready for the LTP <laughs> classic all we need is for these guys to just give us a little bit of the time of the day that's all like it's we are the people at home this is what i've said all the time and this is what about this is what it is about barstool the fact that trent and i have these inside the ropes passes means like you listening to this like you basically have the inside the rope pass like we are right. just you the guy who's like pushing a lawnmower right now like working for fucking 12 dollars an hour like that's who we are that's who i was i was making pizzas fucking five years ago i don't know what the fuck i'm doing out here but somehow some way we have a voice inside the ropes and we're gonna try and figure out what the fuck that means what the fuck that is and if we don't get anything 
anything. I'll just jump in the ocean. It doesn't <laughs> matter. I'll just go back to Borelli's. And if we do get something, it's awesome. So we're just here. We're out here. It's a practice round, and I can't wait to see it. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Well, good luck out there, boys. That's just gave me and everybody a ton of confidence. So you, guys, you guys are our guys. Woo! Absolutely. Grow the game. This is, not, this is the representation right here. Oh, if you're boy. at Kiwa, if you're listening to this and you're going to Kiwa, come say what's up to us. We will be all over that golf course. I will not fucking miss an inch of that course. I'm walking 1 to 18. I won't miss a guy tee off. We're going to be fucking committed tomorrow. Come say hi to us. We'll buy you a drink. We won't buy you a drink. You buy us a drink. Whatever happens, happens. Dude, I will tell you, if you're going to walk that whole thing and you're in a sweatshirt tomorrow, you are going to be drunk. <laughs> because it is out all the way as far as you can see, 8,000 yards and all the way back. And then the walk from – nine to ten might as well be a half mile where <laughs> if you're playing it they'll pick you up in a golf cart and ship you down oh, because boy. it's so far so where I... the billboard frankie sweat it out and then i will say an uptown social might be one of the better spots to watch a playoff hockey game outside Woo! if you're at that if you're at that oh. top bar it is honestly it's outside playoff atmosphere i would pay for one of your islanders friends to come down so you got good vibes down there um, because it is a spectacular place to watch a game. Oh, I know yeah. we're I know we're running long and we'll wrap up here, but the walk at Kiowa cannot be longer than the walk we did today from security to our gate <laughs> at the airport. That was it took all told a real twenty minutes to get oh, yeah, from wait. security to our gate. It was one of the more outrageous. We had to take three escalators. Twenty six. So when I, I I was faster than them Charlotte? because I just Where? like no, this is JFK, uh, JFK. Uh, Terminal Four, and you know what. All these people want these big fucking airports and these luxurious places. They're essentially just shopping malls. So if you're if you really want a brand new right. airport, like all you want is like a Swarovski crystal place and like a fucking <laughs> like and a Louis Vuitton fucking you're outlet. Like I don't yeah. I don't understand why we need these huge airports. Like just get us in and out. Like dude, we walked legitimately 26 minutes of of true walking, like not stopping. You know how long that is? Dude, that's got to be a couple miles. Frankie got through security before I did. And, and I, I, you know, they pulled my bag aside because I had this spray bottle, whatever. And Frankie's already at the gate and he's texting me being like, you're not going to believe how long it takes you to get from where you are right now to where I'm <laughs> sitting right now. And that is just the last thing you want to hear when you're about to walk for 25 minutes. And <laughs> it was far, minutes. man. Oh, boy. It was far. I, I, I do agree with you. The other thing that blows my mind is the luggage sale in airports. Like, if you're showing up there with no fucking luggage, I, I don't bought, understand. You bought I had something? To. I had to. So I'm on my way um, somewhere. I think I was with Dave Portnoy, and I had this um, bag that we had gotten. It was an awesome bag. We got it at Kyle Rudolph's um, yep. uh, celebrity golf tournament that we yeah. did in Minnesota like four years ago. And I loved this fucking duffel bag. And for some, I, I loved it so much that I took it on every single trip that we went to and it started to get broken. Like, you know, the zipper was going one way, the zipper was going the other way. And I just really couldn't contain the clothes to the point where, you know, when you get a bag that's so old and so messed up that like only you can close it and open it. And if someone else tries to maneuver it one way or another, it's over. Like I had these fucking it basically was open on the sides and I had the zipper just touching in the middle. And I'm like, if someone touches this, it's going to explode. And of course they found like a deodorant that they didn't like in my bag. And they, the guy just ripped it open and it was over. The zipper went flying in the air and I'm like, Oh my God. And I had all these clothes in my hand. So the guy, I'm like, what are my options now? Because I legitimately can't, it's over. Like I barely fit this. So he's like, there's a luggage shop right there. $400 for a uh, rolling. You guys see it. It's a silver fucking horrible looking. With the piece Apple of logo on it that you put it's got, Yeah. It's no, got, the, it's, um, that it's thing got was three. The Oklahoma state. Go it. pokes. Go pokes. Oh, that okay. thing's got fucking three. That thing was 350 bucks. So yeah, I'm I'm the <laughs> asshole that bought fucking luggage in the right. airport. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So, I gotta go eat something, fellas. Yeah, we gotta go eat. I don't know. You guys are if you're gonna you guys time are little, uh... if you're gonna time an airport walk and you ever get to zip, time that out. That's that's a forty five minute walk. Ever get where? to where? Zurich. Like the Zurich classic? Like Switzerland. Oh. It's the biggest it's airport really... I've ever been to. That's really? no, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it was a 30 Wouldn't plus it? 35 minute walk. How right? Honest, uh, it's honesty time. Okay. Yeah. You will raise a hands, raise of hands. Who knew that Zurich was a place in Switzerland? 
I'm still on the fence if it's there in Switzerland, but I think that's where it is. I did not know. I that. don't even know if it's actually in Switzerland. Let me look. Yeah. Well, Zurich is like a company that my buddy worked for. So I was just like, oh, I don't know. Is that like in New York City? <laughs> Zurich, Switzerland. You know we're good. We're good. I was 50 50 when I said Switzerland. Though, I, was I was like, like, oh, my friend Kyle I was all works over at Zurich. Europe, and I think this is it. But I'm, so, no, cool. I wouldn't have been able to come up with that because I actually was thinking Germany because I was thinking Munich. Ah. Okay. Zurich, Munich. I was off. I would have been off. I would have been in the wrong country. Whew. I learned something. Yeah. I like the honesty test. That's a good that's a good one. Trent. I was nervous kicking that out. I was like, oh, this could be anywhere. And I've been there. So this is gonna be a real real shot at me if I don't know that. All right, boys. Well, go right. get them tomorrow. I'm I'm rooting for you guys out there. I'm gonna I'm gonna text like kids and be like, "Can you just keep an eye out on for me and, make, and just make sure they don't do anything?" We're gonna be but, strolling in the middle of a ferry by accident. <laughs> shake Frankie's a golf gonna, ball right dude, It's out. gonna be just 80 degrees and Frankie's gonna be wearing a fucking hoodie and they're gonna be like, "What is that guy doing?" Helicopter's gonna come in on like 16 or wherever, like the furthest part of the golf course is like 11 or something, and then they're gonna have to helicopter me off the fucking rough because I've I've gotten heat stroke. Uh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> shout out to All shout right. out to Riggs for putting that putting the yeah. this whole thing let them play thing together yeah, man this for is real awesome. this is some cool shit man thanks boys good luck good luck this week uh, I'm excited to follow along and uh, we'll be back on Thursday hit it hard hit it hard hit it hard, hit it hard.